everybody is Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, it's been a crazy few days, uh, a lot going on, but it is what it is. Um, as I stated yesterday, we are on a fundraiser bus boost push. Uh, the goal is to raise $10,000 by the end of this weekend, which means Sunday, August 6th. Uh, the goal is to raise uh, $10,000. We haven't raised anything as of yet, but the goal is to do that. Uh, we need support for our research center, our think tank, our wraparound services, which include mental health, mental illness, uh, domestic violence, rape, incest, shelter. Also, uh, the Black Man Lead, Rite of Passage Initiative, and uh, Support System, which is a huge part of what we do in helping to reduce African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, proper male development, uh, building strong men, it all begins at a very young age, and we need to fill in for the 1.5 million men that are missing. Uh, our advocacy program for juvenile offenders, uh, helping them to get their lives on track. That's so huge and so important and so much more. If you followed me for the last 15 years online, if you followed me for another 15 before that, you know what we do. This isn't new. I haven't just jumped on this set. I've been doing it my entire life and I've been doing it before you guys on social media for fi pretty much 15 years. Um, I mean, at the, when the, all these platforms were at their infancy, uh, but here we are, we're still going, we're still pushing, but we need your support. So look in the description box, find the link, find the way that you want to give, whether it's cash app, whether it's whatever, and give. This stuff doesn't happen on, by osmosis. It doesn't, it doesn't happen solely because it's supposed to happen or it needs to happen. It happens because we resource it. It happens because we put the energy, effort, and the focus and the commitment in, and we fight through these things. You guys who... Uh, or where and stay up on what's going on. You know, last week I shared right at my doorstep, a place that I've always considered safe since uh, the breakup and I moved into this place right around from my office. I've always considered this place safe. Uh, it's quiet, nothing. Some new neighbors moved in, ended up with a shooting last week. My, my new neighbor, 15 year old, got shot. His brother got grazed, but he was treated at the scene. Uh, I literally stood out there and witnessed that. My truck got shot up, uh, a bunch of things. And this is the work I do. So that one really hit hard because it just lets me know just how bad things have gotten. Uh, you know, I don't have to go to the hood now to feel like, okay, I got to be on edge and on point. I am definitely literally seeing it show up on my doorstep in real time. Uh, but I am 100% committed to being a catalyst for change, to being a voice of reason, to being an advocate uh, for the ones that everybody else wants to throw away because I understand where that behavior come from, comes from. Uh, I understand the dynamics behind it. I understand the play out of multi-generational trauma. I understand the play out of adverse childhood experiences. I've cataloged hours and hours of research I've lectured on it, I've written on it, and I've developed programs. So again, I'm asking you for your support in that. Uh, with that being said, look, I wanna talk about O'Shea Sibley. Um, I've sit on this for a while. Uh, I've talked with some people I really do respect and got their input on it because sometimes you can be so laser centered on an idea uh, that you're not seeing the entire picture. And this may be one of those times that I did that. Uh, I'm so big about unity. I'm so big about co coming together as a people that I try to have as much respect as I can for other people, even when I don't agree uh, with their particular philosophies. I believe they have the right to have them. So, you know, just as I do. Uh, and sometimes in respect of those, I tend to miss a bigger picture. And someone pointed that out to me and it's like, okay, now it's time to speak on this. I heard about it a couple of days ago. And it might have been right after it happened. But for those of you who don't know who O'Shea Sibley is, it's a young black male. Uh, you know, the, the, the report is a young black gay male who was at a gas station and was, you know, in his hype mode and voguing. Uh, if you don't know what voguing is, that's the overpronounced uh, dances that um, are commonly seen done by 
overtly gay males. Um, and I could be simplifying it, but voguing, you know, it's, it's, if you see the dance, you'll know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what it is. If you don't know, look it up. But he was voguing and a pro, uh, uh, apparently uh, a couple of white males. Uh, everything that I can see from the description and what you can see is white male, but they identify themselves as Muslim. And there are white Muslims plenty of them they're not new actually uh but identified themselves as muslim said that his behavior was offensive to their faith and there was some sort of altercation um at the end of the day they end up stabbing and killing o'shea uh the thing is what i want us to be careful in is watch the play watch the play um Again, I've said this before. Anybody that's followed me knows that I am not a supporter of homosexuality, especially in black men. We already are short our men. We already are being feminized. The image of even masculine men is constantly under, uh, black men is constantly under attack. So we don't have the luxury of that as say a white population that has a massive majority uh, you know despite you know what, what all may be going on culturally uh, we don't have that but at the same time I love my black brothers and sisters regardless of their sexual orientation uh, regardless of how they want to quote unquote identify I have a lot of things I disagree with uh, strongly but not to a point of hate or abandonment uh, I love my people, I love, I love my family, and uh, I love my black family. And so love covers a lot of different things. And so from that perspective, it's always me saying, hey, look, that's you, that's you doing you. I love you. I'm not. If you ask me, I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. But I'm not going to mistreat you. I'm not going to mishandle you. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm going to love on you just like I love on everybody else. It's just where I'm at in my life, and I've never been that person to be mean to people because they are not who I am or where I'm at because of hell. That's what's been done to us for centuries. So, anyway, in doing that, you it, when you take on that mindset, and we tend to do that, we tend to be like, hey, we're going we gonna to hold the, the LGBTQ community down. Now, I ain't holding them down, but I'm not attacking them. But if they come for me, I'm ready. And, and when I see BS... I'm going to call it. And that's just truth. I told you from the beginning, I'm not going to I'm not going to hardly ever be real popular because I'm going to call it like it is. So at some point everybody's going to be pissed with me and I'm okay with that. But here's the thing. Be very careful in acknowledging that he's a gay man and he was voguing because what is being really truly quashed is a white male, 17 stabbed a black man the fact that he was a gay black man is being hyped up and it's not by accident the idea that he was gay is being pushed the idea that he was killed because he was gay is being pushed nobody's considering the fact that he just may have been killed because he was black now it was an extra plus that he happened to be uh, he happened to be gay but my my observation, and it didn't come immediately, I'll be honest. It came by talking to some people that I really, truly respect who have some unique positions. And they were like, hey, yeah, okay, he was gay. And the person that I consulted happens to be gay. Uh, you wouldn't know it by talking to him. You wouldn't know it by the stance he takes. His stance is protecting blacks. And he is very vehement about protecting the black male image. You would not know if, you know, you just observed him because that's not his talking point. His talking point are black issues. His talking point are things like that. But I know. And so I contacted him. And he immediately pulled me out. But it had nothing to do with being gay. He was a black man. Now, he was a vulnerable or easy target in their mindset. 
and it's easy for the media to sit up and redirect it. And obviously the LGBTQ community is going to ride it because it's status points. It's points for we need more protection. We need more laws. And yet here we have another dead black man. Now, while a person may put their sexual orientation out front street, the one thing that never, uh, that, that can never proceed, that their sexual orientation can never proceed is their blackness. Even when you see a highly flamboyant black male, the first thing you say is black. We are conditioned to do it. That's why I get, I just get really truly frustrated with black people. Dr. Amos Wilson used to talk about this a lot, that claim they don't see color. It's framing every freaking thing that's happened to you. You can say what you want to say. You can sit up and say, we are beyond that point. No, we're not. Everybody sees it. Everybody talks about it in new lingo. Everybody uses different approaches. But right, we're still in a white racial caste system and we're black. And that doesn't change because, you know, you can put some people in some uh, particular positions and places and say, well, that's a black person. And they no, that 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 that's not how it works. It's in matter of fact, it's not the person, it's the system. We're not talking about bigotry here. We're talking about racism. Bigotry is an individual thing. Bigotry is a form of hatred and bias. Racism is a system designed to protect a specific group of people using racial caste mechanisms as the uh, system of uh, functionality. So it's how we identify who we protect, how we identify who we target, and so much more. And it's done in almost every school of thought and every activity, as the great Dr. Uh, Neely Fuller Jr. taught us. It is impossible to escape. Now you can work around it. You can learn to navigate it. You can actually learn to be successful within it, but you cannot pretend that it does not exist. And those who go around and say that racism no longer exists actually help to substantiate and prolong its effectiveness. You cannot pretend because a couple of people made it through some cracks that the entire wall is all of a sudden not there. And that's the thing that we have to look at. But my concern is, first of all, uh, prayers and, uh, well, I should have said this in the beginning, and God forgive me, but prayers and blessings go out to his family, his loved ones, his friends, those who are feeling the pain and the hurt of losing him, those who knew him well. Uh, may, may, may you be lifted, may you be blessed. Uh, and I am praying for ultimate justice. The other thing that I want to point out here is uh, the fact that they know. Oh, here's the thing. The person isn't in custody, but they know his age. If they know his age, that means they know who he is. Because if they know his age, that means they know people who know him. If they know people who know him, they know his name. If they know his name, they know where he resides and what's going on. But all for whatever reason, he hasn't been taken into custody. Now, by the time this video goes up, maybe he has. But I know at the, at the time of making this video and me looking into it, he had not been arrested. And so it's in, interesting how he's being protected, how his name is being held. Well, he's 17 years old. And yeah, they're supposed to protect the names of minors. But hey, he murked a black male and you haven't even picked him up yet. And instead of it being focused on the fact that he killed a black male, because see, when I, I'm going to tell you, when I look at the kid, you know, outside of being told he was gay, I'm looking at the fact that as a black man, I've seen a bunch of images and some of the black men that have been killed that I've advocated for have been from the gay community. I see black men. Now, their functionality and place in our society and in our culture and in our community may be different than what we would uh, traditionally want to see, but to me, it's a black male. That means they took the life of a black man. They took the life of someone that is important to our community, no matter what their sort uh, their uh, sexual orientation. Again, this isn't about my philosophy. This isn't a God with a whole. This is about having a love for your people that extends beyond everybody doing what you want them to do. 
And I think that's part of our problem. We want people to look like we want them to look. We want them to talk like we want them to look. We want them to be where we're at in our philosophy. Are they the enemy? We have so many schisms within our own collective that we can't possibly produce unity and power. We've got to get out of that. We've got to find the common ground. We've got to understand that outside of sexual orientation, outside of socioeconomic status, outside of educational background, outside of um, all these other different things that people measure you by, you try to hang your head on. We're still black. So then, if that's what I'm going to be measured by, that's what I'm going to identify first. I'm black. I'm a black man. Everything else that comes after that, the degrees, the credentials, uh, the businesses, uh, the accolades and accomplishments over the course of my life, secondary to the fact that I'm a black man. I don't want to escape it. I don't want to deny it. I don't want to marginalize it. I don't want to shrink it and put it in the background and just say it's not that big of a deal. I'm a man. No, I am a black man. I love black women. And so that is where my focus is. Strengthening black men, protecting black women, rearing strong black children. That's my thing. Until we get to a point that we have the power to effectively and consistently do that, I'm going to be on the war path. So that's my take on that. Uh, again, uh, love and prayers go out to all that are, all who are devastated by his death. Um, but we have work to do. Uh, and we can't let this be skated under as if it has nothing to do with his race. It's because he was gay. And I'm not saying that it wasn't a part of it, but what I'm going to tell you is don't think for a second that somebody with enough hatred to stab a person to death didn't also see their blackness and it's our responsibility to defend and call out front his blackness we can let the lgbtq community defend his sexual orientation we need to be standing up front and defending his blackness we need to be defending it with a ferocity and a and and and, and a an intensity uh, a, a, a level of tension that intensiveness that is unquestionable. We've got to start responding with force. And we need to be deliberate about it. That's my call on that. So uh, as I get off once again, uh, this is a fundraising boost weekend. I am challenging each of you to give and literally each of you to give. The goal is to raise $10,000 by Sunday. Um, it can be done. It, it could actually be done pretty easily. Hell, we have 8,000 subscribers on this channel. Uh, not a whole lot in comparison to a whole bunch of other things, but I don't expect a whole lot of people to come here because I don't sugarcoat things. I'm not doing big productions. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to bring some strong-minded people on who have some great information for you. Uh, I'm looking to do that uh, to cut the monotony of, of monologue. Uh, but all the, I w I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to empower and inform you. Uh, and we need to learn how to be able to consume information that isn't sensational. And that's my challenge. But at the same time, I'm putting in work. So my whole days are spent around. So I'm like, let me, let me, let me spend the next three hours putting this video together. I'm building businesses, running businesses, running an organization that serves cities all around the United States and doesn't charge to do it, meaning it comes out of my pocket because I don't get support. You know, uh, there's been a couple of people over the last few months, um, you know, that's given, uh, but I can go months and get $10. And the only reason I get titles, that's one person who signs up in every month they uh, have ten dollars drafted from their account. Other than that, I would. There have been months where I wouldn't have anything, and it's never a month where I sit up and say I can't do it. Never, never a month. Where I said no, I'm not. Can't do it. Don't have it. I figure it out because people need to know somebody's there. People need to know that there's nothing more 
devastating in in this life to, to feel at your wit's end and feel like you're alone. That nobody cares what you're going through. That you could fall off this freaking planet tomorrow and everybody would just keep moving, and they would. I won't let people feel that way if I can help it. You fall off this morning, you probably gonna you fall off this planet tomorrow. You probably gonna pull me with it because I'm gonna be holding on for I'm gonna be holding on for dear life because you matter. And so, with that being said, look, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you guys uh, really truly jump on this support and really think about what I said about O'Shea Sibley. God rest his soul. On that note, I'm out. You guys have a great day.